Hello, it's Mr. Montgomery again, and this lab experiment is for my Physics 2 lab. I'm focused on capacitors. We're going to take some capacitors, connect them in some different ways, put them in series with one another, put them in parallel with one another, put them in kind of a series parallel combination. Also, just kind of looking in general, what are capacitors really do in a circuit? So I'm going to show you, first of all, just kind of all the materials we're using for this experiment. If you haven't done it already, go ahead and print off um, a handout that you would have found on Canvas um, and we'll get started. Let's take a look at these materials. For the biggest part of the experiment, we're going to use in three capacitors. Now I've got them labeled here, one, two, and three, so we'll be able to uh, keep track of them easy later on during the experiment. They're labeled here on the front with the value of their capacitance. We're going to be using 22 microfarads, 47, and 68 microfarads. Now, um, what you can't see as well, these capacitors, they're just built inside of this little case, or I put them inside this case, uh, but they have a positive terminal and they have a negative terminal right here, um, and they're just soldered into this little case. Um, allows us to make easy connections. Now, we're also going to be using this larger capacitor during the first part of the experiment. It's 25,000 microfarads. Got a small little uh, light bulb here. Wires, uh, we're using these. These are called banana plugs. These are convenient because they'll just easily be able to plug in to our capacitors right here. Another thing I like about these, they have removable alligator clips. Um, so you can put those alligator clips on one end of the banana plug. Using a power supply over here, um, multimeter. Pretty much what we're going to be doing with this one during this whole experiment is setting it down here to measure the capacitance. Um, and then we have a switch. Okay, so this is a um, single pole, or sorry, get it right. It's a single throw double pole switch. A single throw because there's only one connection, but a double pole because we can toss it in either direction. Um, and then if we take a look at our handout over here, again, read through this handout. Um, this is the first circuit we're going to construct in just a moment. So we're going to use this large capacitor, our power supply, our light bulb. We've got some wires going around here, and we have that double pole single throw switch. It's going to exist, but it's going to allow us to charge our capacitor and discharge our capacitor without changing the circuit just by being able to throw the switch in a different direction. And your first part then in part one, we're about to look at what's happening then as we flip that switch from charge to discharge and vice versa. So let me get that part all set up for us. For part one, all my connections are made. Now what you're going to notice is, you know, what you see out here on this table, a bunch of wires going everywhere, doesn't look like, you know, this pretty little circuit diagram where everything's nice and straight lines. Okay, but again, we have our, our power supply right over here. It's set for, set for three volts. You see that on the top. Now, right now, the current says zero amps on the bottom because right now there's no current flowing in this circuit and it'll always stay on zero because when the current does flow it flows so quickly um, that it's not going to be enough time for that display to change and it'll go right back to zero anyway uh, but we've got our large capacitor here so it came from our power supply I connected to the positive terminal I uh, went from the negative terminal to my light bulb that runs right here into the middle of our switch and then on the discharge, um, well, really on either side here, uh, but on the charge side, we are running from right here, this blue connection back to the negative terminal. So when we come to this blue side, that's when we're charging the capacitor. And then on the discharge side, we have this red wire going back here to the positive terminal of the power supply also. One other advantage, these... Um, banana clips, they will also just plug right into one another here. All right, so let me zoom in right here so you can see 
what I'm doing. All right, I'm gonna move this a little bit um, closer to the camera here and make my connection come again. Reconnect there. All right, so again, blue side is charge, red side is discharge. So first thing I wanna do is just take this switch, watch that light bulb, flip it over here to charge. Light bulb blink, just a moment. It takes just that long to charge that capacitor. Now I'm gonna flip this over to the discharge side. Light bulb blinks. It was a little bit brighter there on the discharge side. Okay. And as we alternate this again, we can charge it, we get a little blink, discharge it, we get a little brighter blink going on. But that's all that's gonna happen while we're charging and discharging. Again, it's just taken just that long. You might have seen the current. I don't think you could. I'm going to show you that same thing here as I discharge. And now, as I make this connection on charge, watch the current. Okay, it jumps up there, goes right back down to zero. So there's just, just a moment where the current's flowing through this circuit, charging up this capacitor. So what happens if the capacitor isn't here? Let me take these connections, let me plug them together. So we're taking our capacitor totally out of the circuit right here. And now when I connect to the charge side, you get a bright light bulb that just constantly stays on. So what's occurring is there's only just a moment where that capacitor is charging or discharging. And that's the only time the current's flowing through the circuit. Once that capacitor is fully charged, once it's fully discharged, then there's no more current flowing in the circuit and the light bulb no longer shines. Now for part two, the first thing we want to do is actually measure the capacitance for each of these capacitors. I told you at the beginning, this first one is labeled as 22 microfarads, 47, 68 for two and three that's not gonna be their true capacitance. So the first thing we wanna do is measure what their actual capacitance is. They should be close to this value, but there's probably gonna be a little bit of variation. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our multimeter. I'm gonna turn this down here to measure capacitance. And let me get, there we go. Try to get the glare off the screen there for you. And then we're gonna take capacitor number one right over here and I'm going to connect that to my multimeter. I'm going to connect this red wire to the positive terminal and this black wire to the negative terminal and we're going to give that just a moment right here all right and we get 21.91 micro farads. If I can get this close enough uh, right there in the corner, okay. it's a little microfarad symbol. I know there's a terrible glare on this screen. Okay. Getting all kind of reflections of the cabinets over there. But 21, uh, and it's going to bounce around a little bit, but 21.89 microfarads. So that's number one's measured capacitance. All right, we'll do the same thing with capacitor number two. Right, we'll plug it in. Sorry, lost my view here. Okay, take number two, plug it in. It takes, again, just a moment or two. All right. And 48.11 microfarads. 48.11. And we'll do the same thing with capacitor number three. Okay, so as I take number two away, plug in number three, it'll take just a few seconds. The multimeter is literally testing the capacitance on this capacitor, so it's not instant. And the larger the capacitor is, the longer it's going to take to measure. All right, so I know when it's pretty well there, it's switched from nanofarads to micro farad so this 68 microfarad capacitor really is telling us measuring close to 72 and a half microfarads 
Okay, these numbers are important. These are the numbers you're gonna use when you're doing your calculations for the next part of the lab. So what I've done is I've constructed figure two. I took these three capacitors, we connected them in series with one another. So we went from the negative terminal on number one, connected that to the positive terminal number two, negative terminal number two, connected that directly to positive terminal number three. So being in series, they're just one right behind the other, one straight kind of shot going all the way through. I'm gonna take that, these wires you see hanging off here coming from a multimeter, I'll zoom out on that in just a second. I'm gonna plug in to the positive terminal on capacitor one, the negative terminal on capacitor number three. Let me zoom back here, show you that multimeter now, scoot it up here, get it all framed up here at the same time. We're now measuring the total or the equivalent capacitance and we're coming up with 12.32 microfarads. That's the measured capacitance for figure number two, 12.32, 12.33 is gonna bounce around there just a little bit. Now what you wanna do then is calculate on this next part over here, I know everything's in the way, what would you expect the total capacitance to be? That if you take those three capacitors and we measured them just a minute ago, 21.89, and so on, and you connected them in series, you do the math, what should the calculated total capacitance be? That's what you're doing right here. So that would be the math that we would have talked about and learned during the lecture. All right, so now I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna set up figure number three. Figure three, we wanna connect all these capacitors in parallel to one another. So what I've done is I've connected all the positives together so I use two different wires there's two wires plugged in here to number two and then I connected all the negatives together on the opposite side with the yellow wires now when I connect my multimeter I need to connect to the positive side and it literally doesn't matter which of these capacitors I plug into and I need to connect to the negative side same way it doesn't matter where I plug in I'm just opting to plug into capacitor number three and then we turn this screen, get rid of that glare again. And we're gonna give it a second in order to measure this capacitance. Now, when they're in parallel, they should have the largest total capacitance. So that's why it might take my multimeter a little bit longer here to get its measurement. Connect in parallel, you get greater capacitance. All right, you're gonna do the same thing over here. When you do connect these three in parallel, what should you expect? The capacitance to be all right but multimeter is measuring 143.9 microfarad so figure three in parallel 143.9 microfarads now you calculate what you would expect the capacitance to be when they're in parallel now we're ready to construct circuit number four so i've laid these out just the way you see them in the diagram, capacitor two, three, and one. Uh, but I just wanted to connect these from scratch here where you can see what I'm doing. So we're gonna take capacitor two and three. We're gonna connect their two positive terminals together here with a blue wire. Now this, we wanna bring the two negative sides together, and connect that over here towards number one. That little beeping was my multimeter saying you haven't Turn my knob in a while, so I'll do that so it won't turn itself off. So we're gonna connect the two negatives, capacitor two's negative, the number one's positive. Same thing here, we're gonna take number three, connect it over here to number one. So again, doesn't look pretty like the little diagram here, but we got it connected. Now we're gonna connect our multimeter, we're gonna connect to positive terminal. Again, I'm gonna plug into number two, I could plug into number three, it wouldn't matter. And then I'm gonna connect over here to the negative terminal on number one. And we'll give that just a moment here to measure. So figure number four, we have a measured capacitance of 18.48 microfarads. Again, you wanna do the math, figure out what that measured or what that calculated capacitance should be. But what you're gonna do let me zoom in here. 
on the diagram for just a second is you can't do all this at once because we got a little bit, you know, two and three are in parallel with each other. That's in series to number one. So first thing you want to do, figure out what's the capacitance for two and three. What's that capacitance when they're in parallel? Use that value then. It's going to be in series with number one value over here. And so then two-step process to get that total or that equivalent capacitance. All right, let me get ready for figure five. For figure five, I laid out my capacitors just like you see them in the diagram. Number one, two, and three. We want to make this connection. So what we're seeing is that capacitor one and two are in series with each other. So I'm going to connect number one's negative to number two's positive. That's this line right here in the middle. And then we're going to have the positive on number three connected to the positive on number one. So I'm going to use a red wire to make that connection. And then we have the negative sides connected with one another. So I'm going to plug in here to the negative on number two and the negative on number three. And again, like it doesn't look a whole lot like that diagram, but it's connected correctly now. And we want to now measure this total capacitance. So when I measure this total capacitance, it's like I'm plugging in this point right here, which is really making the connection to number three. So I'm going to take my multimeter up here that you can't see right now. It's off the screen. But I'm going to plug it in to number three. I'm going to bring it, bring it a little closer here, plug into the negative terminal. All right, so we got all our connections made. Now let me scroll you up, zoom you out a little bit here so we can see that multimeter and it hasn't there it goes just changed all right so 87.9 microfarads this is figure five 87.9 microfarads is the measured capacitance now when you get ready to make this calculation it's going to be similar to the last one it's going to be a two-step situation. First thing you want to do is say, okay, we'll have capacitor one and two. These two are in series. Let me find what that combination is equivalent to. Once I get that combination's value, that is in parallel to number three. So then I can get the total capacitance. But first, do the series part. That's in parallel to number three. Now, as you get into your questions, the analysis part right here, you're comparing those measurements that we made in this video to what you calculated, just talking about how close together they are, if we see any problems there. Down here, we're going to say, okay, let's take each of those figures we built, two, three, four, five. What if we connected a 10 volt battery to each one? So for example, if we took figure five and we put in a 10 volt battery right here, what would be the voltage for each capacitor? What would be its voltage if we connected each of those different figures to a 10 volt battery? So there's gonna be some math involved there in making those calculations. So that's gonna do it for the experimental part of this lab procedure, dealing with capacitors. One of the main things though is really understanding the key concepts that when you take capacitors, when you connect them together in series, the capacitors in series with one another are always going to have an equal amount of charge. And the capacitors connected in parallel with one another are always going to have an equal potential difference or an equal voltage. But as always, if you need help with anything, feel free to reach out to me and y'all have a good day.